All right, everybody, welcome back to Conquering Commander. Today we're going to be looking at my Xenagos God of Revels deck. I uh, wanted some more gruel in my life, so we're doing Xenagos here. For the complete deck list, go to puremtgo.com. I'll look up my article series, Conquering Commander. You should see it typed up nicely and neatly right here. I'm still, I love his art, by the way. His art is freaking amazing. But uh, you should see it typed up nicely and neatly here. I'll go ahead and put a link in the... Um, video description as well as soon as I am done writing this and it gets published. Don't worry about my printer being out of toner. Um, Alright, so Xenagos is a lot of fun. Uh, big creatures, trying to sneak them out, yada yada yada. Let's take a look at my opponents. First up we've got Melek is it Paragon, uh, Storm Shenanigans. I've actually, I actually played against this guy a couple times recently and uh, he's a lot of fun so thanks for the games. Um, appreciate it. Next up we've got uh, Karametra, who is usually a uh, Selesnya uh, creature-based deck with a bunch of ramp and landfall triggers most of the time. Finally, we've got Kresh the Bloodbraided. Kresh likes it when dudes die and he gets big. Looking at my hand, I've got four lands and uh, a bunch of like high casting cost spells. And I think, for some reason, I might have kept this hand. Yeah, I did. I did because it's got four lands. And um, one of the things when playing this deck with Xenagos is it it pays to be fast, but if you're too fast, it scares the crap out of everybody. However, this is an extremely slow hand, and I wouldn't typically recommend keeping it. Um, yeah, but I do luck out and draw into nature's lore, so I'm going to be able to get at least a little bit of ramp going on. Crash plays second turn Skull Clamp and a Bounce Land. Um, I get Natural Order and I go ahead and ramp a little bit. I'm still like far away from actually casting anything. <laughs> uh, Crash plays Fierce Empath for Rune Scar Demon. All right, stop. And Melek uh, is just laying land, so we're gonna put Rune Scar Demon over here. Now, Mangera of Corridor is actually a pretty good removal spell. It's able to, you know, exile a, a lot of different stuff. Um, at this point, I don't really have anything that I'm worried about. I mean, he could exile Xenagos, but that could just go back into the command zone. I'm still doing nothing. This is a really slow hand for me. There's Oracle of Moldaya, revealing Bloodgift Demon, and another land. There's Mycoid Shepherd. It's a card I haven't seen in a while. Melek plays another land. Finally, I go ahead and throw Xenagos out there. I'm still kind of far away from doing anything. There's Blood Gift Demon. Uh, both these guys go after Melek. I've done nothing, so like I'm pretty low, low prior, low profile right now. Um, Beacon of Creation got cast for Karametra, netting him two insects, and then he plays uh, Celestia Sanctuary. Beacon of Creation. I mean. If you're playing like Boundless Realms and stuff like that, I guess I could see it. Um, I just don't know if it's really necessary. Mike Witt Shepherd goes after uh, Kresh because he has two forms of card draw here, and he's obviously a threat. Melek, end of turn, Factor Fixings, and he picks me. Okay, so let's see what he reveals. So you've got Chain Reaction, Everflowing Chalice, and Sculpting Steel. What I do is I put the Chain Reaction and the Chalice in one pile, and that's the pile he picks. And um, my hope was that he was going to use it right then to blow everybody out, uh, but he doesn't. Uh, instead, what he does is he plays the Everflowing Chalice to put two counters on it, and that's it. So, fine, I'm going to go ahead and throw Garrick out there just to kind of draw into stuff. I'm going to use his plus one ability. I've got Sneak Attack, which is going to be good uh, with stuff like Dragon Tyrant uh, and Natural Order and stuff like that. Not necessarily Natural Order with Dragon Tyrant. <laughs> uh, but I, And I do reveal two creatures and a couple lands. I get Vorapede and Duplicate out there. Now, I fully expect that Garrick's going to die here, but... Um, you know, I think it's wor it was worth drawing two more creatures out. So, uh, Blood Gift Demon kills Garrick, and Oracle of Moldiah goes after Melek. 
That's fine. And then he skull clamps the fierce empath to draw a couple more cards. And there's Frexian Arena. And Yumazawa's pointy fork of doom. Okay. So some of the stuff he's revealed has been like Ash and Powder, which is actually pretty fun. And the Frexian Arena, which he just played. So I've got to worry about those cards. Um, there's nothing really that scary in uh, out there right now in the graveyards to um, Ash and Powder. Uh, but Mangira takes care of uh, Yumazawa right there. Um, all right. So Karametra comes out, and Mikeoid Shepherd attacks me. Again, I'm not doing anything too scary right now. I mean, they know I've got Duplicate and Vorpede in hand. Melek plays Burnished Heart. And there's World Spine Worm. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is um, play Sneak Attack and then throw the Worm out there. So he's going to be a 30-30 Trampler. And I'm going to go and hit Crush. Now the good thing is, is that he's going to leave three worms behind, and I can natural order one of the worms, or I can natural order Vorpede uh, next turn. So there's the World Spine Worm, and he takes a big chunk out of Kresh, who's been drawing a bunch of cards, so he's the one I'm most worried about right now. And I knock Kresh down to four. I've also got, uh, yeah, so there's the worm. It's going to give me three more worms. Plus, after being knocked down to four, he's got two of his draw triggers. It's going to knock him to two. If something scary really comes out, I can duplicate and get rid of something using a sneak attack. So he draws Soul Ring and uh, Lightning Reaver. So he plays the Soul Ring. And he plays Sakura Tribe Elder, and then he plays Lightning Reaver. And he basically holds everything back on defense. And he's playing it out. That's good. Karametra plays Safi. And that generates a landfall trigger. I'm not worried about Safi with any of the stuff uh, that Karametra has in play just yet. But it does make Karametra a, a creature. Melek uh, isn't going to do much right here. Oh, he plays Leylon of Anticipation. So now he's becoming a little bit of a worry. Um, but he can't play Chain Reaction at instant speed without another land drop. He's probably going to try and use the Heart uh, as a blocker at some point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, Vorapede. And I kind of screw this up. And then Stalking Vengeance. My thinking was, and that makes the Xenagos a creature too. Uh, I play Vorapede, Stalking Vengeance. I natural order the Vorapede for World Spider Worm. The Vorapede dies. I kill off Kresh here. And then I forgot that with the natural order, the World Spine Worm won't die at the end of turn. And I was hoping to use the World Spine Worm to do 30 damage with Stalking Vengeance against somebody. Just completely forgot that. I mean, it's still a decent play right here. Um, so I natural order for the World Spine Worm. I make him a 30-30. And then I attack. And what I do is I send most of these guys, after or my three worms after Karametra, and then my World Spine Worm and Stalking Vengeance against Melek. Uh, because Karametra blocks one of the worm tokens, Burnished Heart goes in front of the World Spine Worm. Oh no, Burnished Heart blocks Stalking Vengeance. Uh, and he's going to ramp a little, he's going to get some lands. But what I do is, um, that knocks Melek down to 30 because he didn't block the worm. The worm token dies, and I use Stalking Vengeance to take out Melek. So yeah, the de this deck can throw out massive amounts of uh, damage real quick. 
So now it's just me and Stalking Event or Karametra. Um, Karametra uses Momentous Fall on the Mycoid Shepherd. I think what he meant to do was use it on Karametra. But uh, he's at 39 now. He drew a bunch of cards and gained some life. Or she. Thought Karametra would still be a creature. Okay, yeah. So he, he's going to throw out a blocker in Kodama of the North Tree. And I'm going to just go in with this World Spine Worm and all these other guys. So he's at 39. What, he does have Path to Exile to get rid of my World Spine Worm. Um, fine. Allows me to ramp. And then he's got Crib Swap to get rid of... Uh, stop. What are you Crib Swap? My Vorapede. There we go. So he just drops down to 29. Drawing into two removal spells. And then I Spine Rock Knoll was a bunch of land and soul ring, so I'm fine with getting rid of that. I'm I'm pretty happy with my hand right here. Um Karametra's got five cards in hand and plays Sun Titan to get Safi back. And I don't want him to do some sort of Safi Sun Titan recursion. So I'm gonna just duplicate the Sun Titan right now before Safi even comes back. Safi's back there. And then he plays Battle Grace Angel. Okay. And he attacks me with Kadama to gain some life back with the Exalted Trigger. I'm fine with blocking Duplicant because I would have to sap sacrifice uh, the Duplicant at the end of turn anyways. So I dropped a 32. Okay, here's a mistake. So I'm like, sweet, what I can do is I can sneak attack my Dragon Tyrant in at the end of turn, and that way I'll have more red mana next turn to attack him with him right i completely forgot that okay so that's the trick sneak attack at the end of the turn if you sneak attack something in you're not going to have to it doesn't die immediately you, you're going to get like that one attack it's going to last one more turn but i did forget that dragon tyrant has an upkeep trigger <laughs> so i sn <laughs> i snuck him in and i yeah this here's the me forgetting about the up upkeep trigger which means that, yes, I probably could have won right at this turn. I'm only able to pump him once. So I go ahead and attack. And he drops down to three. Now, I could have wheeled right then, but I didn't want to give him a new hand. If I wanted to, I, if I want to, if I really want to, I could wheel right at, at the beginning of my turn to fill my hand up. But he's only at three, and I'm pretty happy with how things are right now. So he plays Soul of the Harvest, and then a Maria Angel, and that makes Karametra a dude, and then plays Land. So he's got two, and then attacks me with Karametra. Fine, I'll take that. So I've got Relentless Assault. And instead of trying to wheel for a new hand, what I'm going to do is he's got, he's at three life, and he's got three, nine... 10, 13 damage, or 13 defense. So all I gotta do is worm, uh, hit him once with the Xenagos trigger, not attack, and then relentless assault and hit him another time with the Xenagos trigger. And that's what I do. Um, so he's a 10 10, I don't attack, I relentless assault, now he's a 20 20 trampler, and he doesn't have anything, and he succumbs to the beatdown. So there we go, turn 10 with Xenagos. Even with a really slow hand, uh, things worked out real well there. World Spine Worm is just huge. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.